News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And very good evening to you. Warm welcome to Newsline Live. And uh, of course, we are broadcasting from the uh, News First studios in downtown Colombo. And uh, Newsline, uh, as well as News First, is pro are proud members of the Capital Maharaja Group. Now then, this evening, my guest is uh, uh, an academic from the Open University of Sri Lanka, senior lecturer in media and uh, communication studies, and uh, he's uh, right here with me, Dr. Mahim Mendis. Very good evening to you, doctor. Very good evening. Now then, as a person who's senior lecturer in media and in communication studies and in communications, what bothers you most about this proposed uh, broadcasting authority? There is no scope mm. for communication mm. without democracy. Democracy has been undermined severely over and over again. And as media academics, we need to be extremely concerned about the future of the democratic journey in this country. Unless we take steps, especially as academics, we consider it a must that we take steps to mobilize the people, the academic community, the civil and political society in order to ensure that threats to freedom of expression are neutralized. Now, Dr. Uh, Mahim, that was very, very well delivered, if I may say so. Um, and uh, it sounded very, uh, almost as though you were on a political platform, uh, which unfortunately you can't be because uh, the government in their wit and in their wisdom have uh, not called uh, for elections, money has not been released, and all sorts of excuses, excuses, and damned excuses. But apart from that delivery, what specifically bothers you about what is being proposed? The most important thing mm. is that uh, a group of people, five members, Mm -hmm. can be appointed into this authority by the president who will almost have a monopoly on what should be disseminated to the people. Well, in, in, the, in, this, in this bill, these five members, will they have uh, security of tenure? Well, if they want, they can resign. But for five years, they have the term of office and uh, the president. They are accountable basically to the president. But, but the president is, uh, they are there at his pleasure, meaning that there is no security of tenure. Yes, as long as they fulfill the obligations, the expectations of a government that has come with a draconian piece of legislation. On so where, where is the independence of it? It's, suppo it's, it's supposed to be an independent body for the betterment of the film and television industry. Where, where is the independence? We are not talking about on, on the same lines as the Public Service Commission, the independent commissions that we have been talking about, the Right to Information Commission and so on. We are not talking about a national independent media commission. We are talking about a regulatory authority which has nothing to do with the stakeholder interests in democracy. Then whose interest is this uh, uh, regulatory body going to be acting? Very clearly, the regulatory body will ensure that the interests of the present regime. When you say the present regime, we are talking about a regime without a proper mandate. An executive, gov the government led by an executive which has no mandate. Rejected who by have... the people in 25 districts in nine provinces. Uh, let's get this let's, for sake of clarity. What do you mean by that they have no mandate? Of course they have a mandate. They were elected by the people, the 225, and they are there, and the people elected them. Because you about... say, and I say, and I may say, and everybody else says, Ndara Galea, doesn't mean that they have no mandate. 
The parliament has 134 members, the Pohotua MPs, who have elected, elected as a result, as I believe, as a flawed position in the second Republican constitution, a man who has been rejected in every single electorate in the country. He was not even a member of the national list. He appointed himself, he went to parliament, and in the context of an unprecedented national uprising, he took oaths. Well, the constitution has allowed that. The, the constitution is absolutely clear. It, the, the appointment of uh, our president is entirely constitutional. Entirely constitutional, unethical, immoral, illicit. This is not in line that's with the your, spirit that's of your democracy. View. That's your view. Of course, that is my view. Yes, but it's not tested amongst the people. As a citizen of a democracy, I will always be loyal to the benchmarks, benchmarks of democracy. The Constitution permits something that goes against the spirit of democracy. Well, as a citizen, I cannot be satisfied with but that. But Dr. Mendes, if you, if you are so, as you say, why is it that uh, nobody, as far as I know, has been to the Supreme Court uh, asking for an interpretation on this very matter? That which is flawed, that which is flawed, if something that is flawed permits a situation like this to arise, like in the case, like in the case of people crossing over, being elected from one party, crossing over to another party against the mandate given by the people. But if Dr. that is, one second, if that is permitted by the constitution, what type of constitution are we talking about? Is it a democratic constitution? But if you are unhappy and you feel in your view and your uh, people like-minded as you, if they're unhappy and they feel that, like you said, your words, that it's flawed, then surely the most uh, gallant thing to do would be to uh, petition the Supreme Court. If the law has permitted, there is nothing that can be done. The people of this country, through the uprising, before the uprising, very clearly wanted, even during the Yahapalana government, 2015 to 2019, to ensure that they put an end to all these things that go against the spirit of democracy. The constitution has to be amended. All that permits matters that make a curse to the people in a democracy should be removed. Constitutional amendments are meant for that. But, if there uh, is anything flawed, that has to be removed. But honestly, uh, Dr. Mendes, you don't seriously expect the Supreme Court to wake up one morning and say, guess what, you know, we're going to uh, start uh, looking at this matter. They have to be petitioned. Why is it that nobody has gone there? Why, are, why is the SJB silent on that? Why is the NPP silent? Why is Mr. Sumandran silent? Why are all these legislators who make up the combined opposition, why are they not doing anything legally about it. Let me repeat again, more than going to the Supreme Court and petitioning, of course, I myself is a petitioner in a different case in the Supreme Court against bankrupting of the nation. No, well, no, let's deal now, with this problem. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is we have to be very, very realistic. No. We have to ensure our members of parliament should ensure that they bring the political parties within the democratic stream, they really care for the future of democracy, should ensure that constitutional amendments are brought in order to protect the spirit of democracy. This presidency goes against the spirit of democracy. Crossing over from one side to another goes against the spirit of democracy. With all, time, with, with all due court. respect to uh, the existing president, he didn't start this stuff uh, about the crossovers. It's a separate matter and uh, there's never been proper resolution on that. But I'm asking you the question again, why is it that the Supreme Court hasn't been petitioned on the so-called 
uh, what did you call it, flawed constitution that permits this, thing, this president to be where he is? Well, I, I, what I can say is, as an ordinary citizen, and, and, my uh, and, position, and a lecturer on... My position, my position is that we as academics, we have addressed this matter over and over and over again that what is flawed in the constitution should be eliminated. If the political parties have not gone to the Supreme Court to challenge these things, that is a different matter. I mean, they won't go to challenge themselves. I cannot themselves. be speaking on behalf of them. No, but they're not going to challenge themselves. It's up to uh, civic-minded people to do that. And as you know, the Supreme Court's full of such cases yes. and such petitions. But nobody, none of the people who are saying this uh, have gone to do something legally about it. If the Supreme Court finds, then that's fine. But nobody has gone there. Why? Well, I fully, I do not disagree. I fully agree. All what I can say is that in line what you said, in line with what you said, if the people have not gone to the Supreme Court on that, well, unfortunate. But it is very, very... Unfortunate for whom? For you, me and... The cameraman a, and everybody ab in our control room. Well, we need a dynamic, a politically more conscious, democratic citizenry. We need a more dynamic, awake, awakened citizenry who can address these issues. And there is indifference and apathy. Apart from what happened in the uprising, it is very clear that this is a society that is burdened with indifference and apathy to that which is wrong, that which is immoral, unethical. Right. Well, uh, that is uh, uh, the viewpoint of Dr. Mahim Mendis, who is uh, my guest this evening on Newsline Live. Um, before we go into a break, can I ask you this? What do you have to say? We have a man who is uh, the president, who lost his own seat. He, his party managed to get one bonus seat because of the quirks in our constitution, our electoral laws. And then nine months later, you know, he nominates himself and he gets in there. And a bunch of uh, MPs, 134, unfortunately the name of the number of the bus that also serves the National Hospital in uh, Angola. All right, 134. Get that right? 134. But, but he ends up as the president. He, by his own admission, time and time again, President Vikramasinghe says that he came into this position to save this country's economy. What on earth is he doing? twiddling and trying to mess about with the media. What, what do you think? Can you speculate what, he, what his intention is? Very, very, because you can't obviously say what's in his very, head. Very clearly, the position taken by Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe, the current president, is a position that he should not be taking. Because at the parliamentary elections, the general elections, Whatever that the United National Party put forward as a program for the people, for social, economic, political, cultural, moral development of the people, had been rejected. A man with a rejected program cannot be claiming arrogantly what he has claimed. He has no business to claim what he claimed. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mahim Mendis. Um, he is in conversation with me uh, live on Newsline. Uh, Newsline Live, of course. And um, it's now time to listen to the um, headlines from the wonderful primetime news team out there. And um, we'll see you on the other side of the break in which we will be talking about a decision made in 1997 by none other than the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. We'll see you on the other side of the break. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV1. Vocational Training Authority Officer held by Police Narcotics Bureau died due to blunt force trauma. 
court orders of immediate arrest of those responsible. What happened to the firearms issued to MPs and ministers? Ruling on petition against Diana Gamage's seat postponed. More SLP PMPs appointed to sectoral oversight committees. Cabinet green light for regulatory body for the film and television industry. Water levels of Kalu, Gin and Nirvala rivers rising. Warning issued over a low depression and tremor experienced in Gampola. Price of 60 essential medicines to drop from 15th June. When a heart attack strikes, every minute makes the difference between life and death. With the right care and treatment at the hand of the most skilled surgeons and medical professionals. With the perfect environment for recovery. Darden's Heart Center. Dedicated to you. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV1. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Dr. Mahim Mendis from the Open University of Sri Lanka. He's a senior lecturer on media and communications, so he must know a thing or two. After all, he's instructing uh, our young men and women who want to uh, end up in the media and in communications. I wonder, Dr. Mahim Mendis, is that, a, is that foolish of them, considering what's going on with media? Is that, is that foolish of them to try and pursue a career in media and in communications for whom to pursue for, for your students um, I mean shouldn't they be doing something else because this is so draconian it's it's un, it's completely untrue let me let me just go back because As, uh, I promised to go to go back to 1997 here we go uh, this is what uh, just uh, Chief Justice um, GPS de Silva and Justice Amr Singh and uh, Justice Ramanathan held the regulatory body envisaged by the bill clearly lacked the in, that independence since its members were government appointees with no security of tenure and it was obliged to follow directions given by the minister. Moreover, the bill would empower the minister to interfere with the presentation of programs and commercial advertising which would undermine the principles of fairness, infringe the public right to information, and deprive certain broadcasters of sponsorship income on a legally unaccepted discriminatory basis. So if anyone here is thinking that this is actually very fair, well, think again, because at some point you may need someone on your side to highlight your case, your case of injustice. It's that classic um, case of, and then they came for me. And it might happen. So I say to you, uh, Dr. Mayim Mendes, uh, Minister Bandula Gunawad, the cabinet spokesperson, he dared compare this proposed body, broadcasting body, with the uh, regulatory mechanism that is in the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Is there any connection between that and here, what they're promosing, proposing here? I don't know from where Mr. Bandula Gunawardana got that information. He should understand very clearly that the United Kingdom hasn't got a government-appointed regulatory body for the media. There is the British Press Complaints Commission which is representative of all the, the stakeholders and it is not a body that is dominated by the government. Probably he is thinking about the Press Council Act long, term, long time ago during Mrs. Sirimavu Bandaranaika's government and he, he thought about that. 
and then he says that UK has a body similar to what we had in the 1970s called the press council. We do not have a press council. We have a press council. They have restored it again. But the Press Complaints Commission in Sri Lanka was inspired by the British Press Complaints Commission. And that is not a government appointed, monopolized body that comes from the newspaper industry itself. So uh, clearly, if this government is so insistent on going this route, uh, and they seem to do it all the time, wasting their time, instead of looking at the shortages of medicine, for example. A few days ago, I, was, uh, I found myself at the cancer unit of uh, the Karapitya uh, Hospital in Gaul. Well, what a tragedy that was. In the cancer wing, in both the female and the male wing, most, more than often, the beds were two to a bed. Two patients to a bed, top and tailing. This is no picnic. This is a serious illness. And at least give them the dignity and some modicum of comfort by giving them at least one bed to themselves. No, no, it was two. And the corridors were also had patients lying on the floor, having bought their own mats. Is this how a democratic government is going to look after its people? Some of those people probably voted for these politicians. Adding insult to injury, when it came to taking the chemotherapy treatment, patients were told that they didn't have any and they'd have to go and rely on the wonderful Cancer Research Society of Sri Lanka. Needing 245 milligrams, they were given 100. So what do you do? Is there any point in getting 100 when the doctor says you need 145? Oh no, but if you trot along to a private chemist outside, you can buy it. 22,000 rupees for the balance. Really? I thought we had a national health service, free to the people of Sri Lanka. But no, these politicians waste their time doing this, that and the other in pursuit of power, in pursuit of telling lies and lies and more lies to the public. And then the public die. And what can they do? Oh, they're not even bothered. I'd like to know when the Minister of Health last visited the cancer unit of the Karapitya Hospital. I'd just like to ask, you know, I'm sorry about this rant, but a rant it has to be, because the bottom line is that the 225, and this is a question, so you, might, you can actually come in, but the 225, I suggest that they are unfit for purpose. Would you agree that they are unfit for purpose? Well, as a habitual practice, the people always undermine the parliamentarians. But uh, what is uh, most significant is that a government should have long-term public policy very clearly defined in the interests of the people, for the common good of the people, whether it be the health sector, whether it be health education, whether it be transport, whether it be media, there has to be proper public policy formulation. So, we need accountable government. When we don't have a government accountable to the people and to make matters worse, not properly mandated by the people, as in the case of the current holder of executive office, well, matters get even further deteriorated because the people find that the rulers are not accountable and also the rulers. The president knows that he is not accountable to the people but he has not got a mandate. But, so uh, it is uh, in such a context. But as uh, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit uh, said on my program, he said the Catholic Church 
hasn't forgotten. And when this president ceases to be the president, because after all, he can't be president forever, no matter what, whereas the Catholic Church has been around for a while and it's likely to be around for even further. Therefore, he said, when the president is no more the president, the Catholic Church will be holding him accountable as well as the others already held in terms of the uh, non-delivery performance-wise in terms of the Easter tragedy. So, uh, Dr. Mai Mendes, what happens when you shut down the media? Uh, and I think if I was able, if I'm able to read this, uh, which has been kindly sent to me, uh, we, a lot of people are familiar with this, but thank you for sending it to me. First, they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak out for me. Do you think that's about going to happen in Sri Lanka? You get rid of the media, the independent media, the truly independent media, not the pseudo-media, uh, independent media. Because there's, there's a big difference between the real independent media and the pseudo, so-called independent media. Well, they have every reason now, in the context of the current political culture, they have every reason to kill, murder, kill the independent media. Media as a watchdog, the fourth estate, has no role to play as they think in the current context. But it is a curse to those without a mandate. If it is a curse to those without a mandate, those without a mandate have every reason to bring the type of legislation that they have proposed right now. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mahimendis. When, when you were talking about that, I was, uh, a thought came to my mind. And uh, I'm glad that you mentioned it. Because we need to remind people. This killing off has been going on forever. The killing to stay in power. The killing to obtain power is nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. Mr. Prabhakran, sorry, Prabhakran, he did it too. And so did so many others. The state has also had its own fair share. Let's look at the unresolved murders of the, the journalists who were attacked and killed. Pragit Eknali Goda, not even uh, fraction of his dental records have been found, ever. But there is a group of people who clearly know what happened to Pradigit Eknaligura. And what about our friend of this channel, the outspoken journalist La Santa Vikramatunga? What happened to him? Is anyone saying anything? All we've had is lies, lies and more lies. We had President Rajapaksa who assured, President Minder who assured an independent, independent inquiry, really. It's so many years. The Vikramatunga family is still waiting. And without the media, Dr. Mahim Mendes, this is the last few seconds, do you think that the public would be informed of all these devilments without an independent media? Absolutely not. If there is no independent media and at a time like this with all the draconian actions legislation that is proposed if the community of journalists in this country and also those who care for democratic media culture in this country do not unite against authoritarianism we will not only not have media we will not have a proper existence. Our lives will be, will become a curse to ourselves. Thank and you. Thank you, Dr. Mai Mendes. Uh, that we've run out of time. And uh, that's the way it was on Newsline Live this evening. We were talking to Dr. Mahim Mendes, of course.
And um, it's now time for uh, the primetime news. But before I say, have a great evening as much as you can. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.